A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I do ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, we discuss all things AFCON, but the focus on today's episode then is the favorites, you know. So, on today's episode, I'm going to look at four teams, which I think are the favorites for this year's AFCON and uh, go through the squads, go through the technical team with regards to how they'd like to impose themselves and then look at the key players as well. So these four teams then are very, very strong teams. The first being Algeria, Egypt, Morocco, and then Senegal. Those four teams, I think, are the favorites for the AFCON 2021 in Cameroon. However, there are teams such as Cote d'Ivoire, you've got Nigeria, you've got Ghana. So those are other teams that you can't write off, but I think these four are the strongest. So we will then start with Algeria. So when you have a look at Algeria then, this is a team that has been doing very well in the past couple of years. They did win the AFCON and uh, they've recently won the Arab Cup as well. So coach Belmadi has been doing very, very well with this group. And um, he's had this group then for a couple of years. They've been building and uh, they are quite a solid side by virtue of the fact that they're very consistent. He's very consistent with his selection. He's retained a core group. And um, the key players then who did do battle against Senegal in that AFCON final are in the squad as well. So that then puts them as firm favorites and uh, for continuity as well. So when we have a look then at coach Jamal Belmadi's squad, as the goalkeepers then, he's got uh, Riaz uh, Bohi, uh, Okuji, and then uh, Zegba as well. So Reyes is then the starting goalkeeper, very experienced goalkeeper then who's been there for Algeria for so many years. Another then who was at um, the previous AFCON who was keeping goal for Algeria as well. When we have a look at it then in defense, um, got so many quality players in defense. Um, so the defenders then you've got um, Ben Lamar, you've got Mandi, you've got um, Tugai, you've got Chetty, you've got Bedran, you've got um, Rami Baz, uh, Ben Sabini, who plies his trade for Borussia Muchen Gladbach. He's a left back, quality footballer. He is then also a player then who was part and parcel of that Algeria side who won the AFCON um, against Senegal in 2019. And um, just to focus then on uh, Ben Sabini and um, the quality that he does bring then to this Algerian side. So he is a left back. Very comfortable on the ball, firstly, and has lots of quality. So even from deep pockets of spaces, he is a player then that can find that pass. And then when he does look to go on the overlap and offer that width for Algeria, he can deliver that cross as well. From a defensive perspective, he's very strong in 1v1 situations. And um, even then, in and around the 18-yard, he is a player then that is well adept at putting in that last-ditch tackle. And he also loves a sliding tackle as well. He also does very well then when he recovers the ball. So a quality player, player for this Algerian side as well. Having a look at the rest, the rest of the defenders, you've got Yusuf Atal, you've got Benyada, you've got uh, Halamia, and then you've got uh, Tarhat as well. And then when we move it on right along then to the midfielders, um, you've got Ismail Benaka who plays then for AC Milan. So this is also then a quality midfielder who would add so much for this Algerian side within the heart of midfield. And then when you move it on right along, you've got Zeruki, you've got uh, Zorgan, you've got uh, Belkelba, you've got Sofian Feguli as well. So this is then a very, very experienced um, midfielder and um, a player then who's very creative for this Algerian side. So with Sofian Faguli, we do know that um, he can play off the wing, but he plays mostly as a 10 for this Algerian side. So he does tend to drift to um, the right side at half space. He does also um, drop off into deeper pockets of spaces. He's got so much um, quality and technique on him where then he's able then to find 
those forward line players and he's able then to find um, his strikers and find his players as well. So the key thing then about uh, Sofian Faguli is that he brings so much experience and so much versatility in attack as well because can play off the wing. But I'd like to think that um, Ben Rama would come off the one wing, you'd have Riyad Mahrez off the other wing, and he'd play as a 10 for this side then, you know. So, so much experience that he brings and um, the quality as well with regards to his final ball for this Algerian side. And then you've got uh, Sofayan Bendegba as well. Moving on then right along to the forwards. So this is where it is quite star-studded and where Coach Belmadi has a plethora of options that he can go with when you have a look at this Algerian side from a qualitative perspective. So you've got Riyad Mahrez, who is then um, their captain as well. This is a player then who's been doing very well this season so far for Manchester City. So he does start off the right wing and does look to drift into his left foot, where then he's very dangerous. What we do know about Mahrez he loves going 1v1. He can beat his man on the outside. He can also beat his man. Um, he can beat his man on the outside. And he can also beat his man coming on the inside. That's what he likes to mostly. That's what he does mostly. So he does start off vertical zone five. And he plays as an inverted winger. He looks to come in onto his favorite left foot, where he scored so many goals as well. Also, then very good at um, set pieces. He can deliver very good corners into the box. And he can then also deliver very good free kicks. And then the direct free kicks as well that he can look to score as well. So then this is their talisman, a very dangerous player in Riyad Mahrez because he can give you the assist and he can also score goals as well. And um, having a look at this Algerian side then, uh, Sofian Faguli and Riyad Mahrez are the key players and the players to watch out for for this Algerian side. And very key then when it comes to creating those chances because then this Algerian side, from a qualitative perspective, they've had the best... Um, They've had the best attack in the qualifiers and they've scored so many goals. Moving on then right along, you've got um, Onas, you've got uh, Yusuf Baleli, which is also then a quality player, very dangerous. And then you've got uh, Said Benrama, who's also been doing very well for West Ham, who currently sits on um, four assists and five goals. I stand to be corrected, but those are his um, numbers for West Ham so far this season. And he's been doing very, very well. And what I like about this then is that Ben Rama can come off the left. You've got Riyad Mahrez who can come off the right. Faguli can play as a 10. Faguli can play as a 10. And then um, as uh, the striker, you could always have uh, uh, bon Bonja or you could have um, Slimani, you know. So those are the two options as um, the number nines who are very, very good and have been scoring goals for this Algerian side, which makes their attack very, very strong. The rest of the attackers, you've got uh, Yasin Brahimi, which is also a quality player. You know, it can come off either wing and um, very quick player as well. Very creative and very skillful. And then you've got um, Bulaya. You've got Slimani, like I mentioned. You've got uh, Boneja. And uh, then you've got uh, Amura as well. So that is then the attacking options for this Algerian side. They've got strength and depth as well. And um, they could look to tweak it at times, you know. So when you have a look at it from an offensive perspective, that is where Algeria is very strong. That is where they're looking then to hurt opponents. And they score so many goals. They play free-flowing, attacking football. And they're very aggressive and they're very direct. And they will score a lot of goals and that is why I think then they are one of the favorites with regards to their consistency, the experience within the side and how well they've done over the years and the quality that they possess. But let's move it on then right along to Egypt. So with Egypt then we do know that Carlos Quiros was recently appointed and uh, he will then be leading this Egyptian side and uh, it's going to be very interesting then to see what he can do with this Egyptian side and um, what then they can put potentially achieve at the AFCON as I've got them down as one of the favorites. So when you have a look at Egypt then we do know that as um, they're long-standing and experienced goalkeeper. You've got Mohamed al Shinawai, uh, a goalkeeper then who's been doing very, very well for al Akli, very experienced as well and um, has played so many tournaments at international level and also for al Akli as well. And then when you have a look at their defenders, you know, there's so many quality defenders, but defenders then that I'd like to focus on, 
you've got Hegazi and then you've got Ayman uh, Ashraf who plays then for Al Akhli. When you have a look at these two then these are two quality defenders but you know who have um very contrasting qualities then with Hegazi is much more of a physical presence you know, very big, very strong center back. And then with Ashraf, you know that um, he's very good on the ball and uh, he's got those line breaking passes and he plays as the left sided center back and very good at advancing and progressing the ball as well. You know, so with those, with those two, I'd like to see them as a pair, you know. However, we do know that um, Carlos Quiros has other qualities. Um, other quality within the squad from a defensive perspective. So the centre-back pairing for, Al for um, Egypt rather could change. But I'd like to see Hegazi partnering Ashraf. You know, I think they'd complement each other very well at the heart of defence for this al Ahli side. Moving on then right along, when we have a look then at the midfielders, key midfielders then, you've got uh, Hamdi Fati, you know, and you've got Sulai as well. These two are very experienced. They've played together as well. Uh, for Al Ahli, they play together. So when you have a look at them, if they were to start then as a pair within the heart of midfield, they'd bring so much quality and experience for this Egyptian side. These are quality midfielders then who are very strong and very experienced. And um, then you've also got um, uh, uh, Mohamed Trezeguet within the who can play then as um, uh, who can either come off either wing or he can play as a ten. And then who mostly comes off the wings. And then you've got Muhammad uh, Al-Neni. And then you've got uh, Ramadan Sobi as well. You know, so those are some of the quality midfielders that this Egyptian side has. And um, yeah, so from a midfield perspective, they're quite strong. And they've got experience as well within the art of midfield. You know, as a pair, you could have uh, Hamdi Fati playing with Al-Neni. Or you could have Al-Neni and Sulaya. Or if they want to pack the midfield with three strong midfielders, you can go with um, all three of them. You know, so going to be very interesting to see then how Carlos Quiroz goes about his business with regards to instituting and imposing his game model with this Egyptian side and then up front you've got um, as the players play up front you've got uh, Mustafa Mohammed who plays his trade for Galatasaray you've got Mohammed Sharif who plays for Al Akhli and then you've got Mohammed Salah and then you also have then uh, Magdi Afsha is also another player that um, this Egyptian side has but obviously then the focus then is um, Mohammed Sharif and Mohamed Salah. Those are the two players then who will be obviously looking to get the goals for this Egyptian side. So you've got Sharif who plays as a striker and then you've got uh, Mohamed Salah who then starts for, as um, the right inverted winger, sometimes as the inside forward. But for this Egyptian side, he does tend to roam a lot. You know, so at times you will find him popping up into the central zone in vertical zone three. You will find him occupying zone 14 and um, a player then who gets who scores so many goals and who's so very, very dangerous and uh, has been doing very, very well for Liverpool. And um, when you have a look at this Egyptian side, then I think they've got also they've got strength and depth. They've got so many options that they could go with. But Mohamed Salah then is their key player and um, their talisman as well. And then when we um, move it on then right along, we'll have a look at Morocco. So when we have a look at Morocco then, uh, Coach Vahid is um, the man at the helm and he's in charge of this Moroccan side. But... The big news then with Morocco then before we get into the squad is um, the exclusion then of uh, a certain player who goes by the name of Ziyech who plies his trade in England for Chelsea. This is a player then who um, is very dangerous on his day and he plays very, very well, you know. But he has been left out and um, it has been for discipline reasons because him and coach um, Vahid haven't had the best relationships in, in the past. And um, when you have a look at Ziyech then, this is a player who could have brought so much quality to this Moroccan side. However, if the coach feels that his head is not in the right place and from a disciplined perspective, he's not well conditioned, then I stand firmly with the coach then because you don't want a player then who 
um, lacks that commitment and lacks that desire to play for the national team. Because when you put on a national team jersey, it's the best football jersey that you can put on. You know, representing your, your country is the highest honor within football. So, yeah, moving on then right along. When we have a look at it then, when we have a look at their defenders then, two, two key players then I would like to look at in defense. You know, you've got, uh, uh, you've got Hakimi, who plays his trade for PSG. So this is a player then who plays as a, as a right back. But we do know how good Hakimi is and uh, how he likes to advance then and bomb forward, you know. He's also then a player who's got an eye for goal, you know. So he can also play as the right-sided wing back. So this is a player then who is, will be key for this Moroccan side, you know, both from a defensive perspective and offensively as well. And then you've got Romain Saiz, you know, who at times does wear the captain's armband and is their captain and who also plies his trade for Wolverhampton Wanderers in England. So he does play for Wolves, very experienced campaigner and a very, very strong defender as well. Also very comfortable on the ball, does progress the ball from the back and also can play those passes as well, you know. So defensively, they're quite strong. Other players, you've got Adam Massina, um, who plays his trade for Watford. You've also got... Um, You've also got uh, Badri Benoun as well, who plays for Al Ahli as well. So from a defensive perspective, there are quite a couple of strong defenders for this Moroccan side. And um, yeah, very interesting to see then who coach Vahid would go with as his main defenders. And then when we move on right along and um, have, a look at, um, have a look at the midfield. So when you have a look at um, the midfield, you've got uh, Ayman Barkok, who plays his trade for Frankfurt in Germany. You've got Amrabat, who's also then a key player for this Moroccan side. You've got um, o Onahi. You've got uh, Shahir. You've got Lauza, who plays for Watford. And then you've got uh, Amala as well, who plays for Standard Liège in Belgium. Those are the midfielders for Morocco. And then when we have a look at um, the attacking players then, the forwards, you've got Munir, it's a player then who used to play for Barcelona, but he does play for Sevilla um, right now. And then, sorry, and then you've got Sofian Bufal, another key player then who is very, very skillful and uh, a player then who can create so many chances for this Moroccan side and also get those goals. And then you've got Sofian uh, Rahimi as well. So those are some of the dangerous players that they have. Yusuf um, Nasir as well. And then you've got Kabi as well. You know, so those are some of the players that uh, Morocco do have. And um, yeah, it is then quite a strong side. And to a certain degree, I would put them as favorites. But I also think that they could be dark horses and be that team that nobody really expects to spring a surprise. I think they can go on and even make it to the final, you know. But yeah, moving on then right along, we've got Senegal as uh, the fourth and final team. This is a side then that has so much experience, a side then that um, went on and uh, actually played in the final against Algeria. So when you have a look at Alou uh experience and uh, he's also his experienced squad, this is a team then that can actually go on and um, do one better and win the AFCON this year. I've also got them down as the favorites. When we have a look then at Senegal, when you have a look at it then from a defensive perspective, um, in goals, Edouard Mendy, who has been doing very well for Chelsea as um, their, their centre-back. You do then have uh, Kulubali. When you have a look at um, the midfield as a key player, you've got Idrissa Ganagé, and then you've got um, uh, Sadio Mane then, who does play up front. So... When you have a look at that spine, you know, I want to focus on that spine. You know, I haven't gone through the whole squad, but I just wanted those key players and having a look at that spine. Because when you have a solid spine, that is what really helps you with regards to winning championships and winning tournament football is having a strong spine. And when you then have a look at those four players in Edward Mendy, you have a look at Kulubali, you have a look at Idrissa Ganagé, and you have a look at... Um, Sadio Mane as well. Those are four players then who are playing their trade in Europe at the highest level and all four of them are doing well for their club sides. Hopefully then they can translate that form into the Senegalese side. So it's going to be very interesting then to see who goes on to win. But 
I think the winner will come from one of these four teams. You've got Algeria, you've got Egypt, you've got Morocco, and then you've got Senegal as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, do let me know at home who do you think is the favorite? What do you make of um, some of the key players? What do you make of the squads as well? So, with certain teams, I didn't go through each and every single um, player within the squad, but I had a look at key players and how they could look to impose themselves and make an impact for their sides. So, when you have a look at it then, You've got Algeria, you've got Egypt, you've got Morocco, and then you've got Senegal as well. However, because this is AFCON, and it is the real thing, you could have a surprise. You've got Cote d'Ivoire, you've got Nigeria, you've got Ghana, and they could also go on to win. But this episode was focused on those four teams which I think are the favorites. It is Algeria, Egypt, Morocco and Senegal as well. At home, do let me know who do you think will go on to win the AFCON and who are your favorites in this year's AFCON. Thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. It is AFCON signing out. <laughs>